Hi, this is Ali Arango, and today I want to show you how to get an anime look inside of Blender 2.74. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe or other 3D programs. Okay, I learned how to do this technique from a YouTube user named uh, Marius Oberholster. And uh, he had a tutorial showing how to take uh, make human characters uh, and make them look like anime in Blender. So he is uh, where I learned this from. As a matter of fact, if you want to find out more details about this, I recommend you go to uh, his page and check him out. His name is Marius uh, Oberholster. Okay, what you're looking at is a model that I was just uh, modeling uh, for practice, uh, just practicing uh, my female faces here. Uh, I've been an anime fan for a long time. Uh, I actually say I was an anime fan before it was cool to like anime. I used to actually get uh, made fun of for, for liking uh, uh, Japanese animation. Anyway, uh, because of my my like for for uh anime the anime look in in, gen in general i think this is a uh, very cool and it's you know typically with the rest of blender's amazing stuff you can actually the fact that you can actually make animes in blender you know like, like most other blender stuff is a uh, amazing okay and we are in the blender renderer here not the uh cycles renderer okay the first thing we want to do in setting up this effect is go to uh, our world settings so we're gonna click right here okay I'm just gonna hover my mouse uh, right here and this allows me to expand this panel so you can see it better okay what we want to do is you're just gonna scroll down and again your world settings button which you can see right here uh, and what you want to do is you want to put a check mark uh, right next to environmental lighting and then as far as the energy for this environmental lighting, you want to click here and you're going to put in a 0.25. Now I'll just left click here to get that in there. So you want your energy to be 0 0.250. Okay, and you want to look down a little bit further to where you see it. Blender says gather. And then look beneath ray trace, you'll see attenuation. And where you see this, this says distance. You want to click here and uh, put zero here. Okay, now we're done with our settings for the uh, the world settings. Uh, so we're going to click here, which is, which is our material settings. So now what we're going to do is make sure we're selected on the main uh, face. And uh, you see here where it says that you, you see this uh, material and it just says you know there's a gray ball there go right to this plus select the plus this will pop up once this pops up select new okay now what you're gonna do is uh, select the fuse right here where you'll see the fuse see the box right here you're just gonna click right in here for diffuse and what you're gonna do is just pick a color a main color uh, you know whatever you you want it to be Okay, now you're going to change this Lambert right here, which is right next to your the fuse. You're going to change this to Tune. And what you're going to do right here is the way that uh, Marius describes it is you're going to increase the size so that these two circles are kind of intersecting. Right about there. It's almost like a triangular looking thing. It almost looks like a cat's claw or something. Uh, you know, the, the shape as you push the sides up at least that's what that black kind of looks like to me like a cat's claw anyway uh, what you're gonna do is take your intensity you're gonna take this as high as it can go okay now we're gonna look down further in the list to specularity we don't need this so you're gonna go to intensity and you're just gonna take that intensity bar just by clicking on it and dragging to the left all the way down okay now you're gonna look further down the list and you're going to look to where you see it says options. Then you're gonna put a check, you're gonna put a check mark next to full oversampling right here. 
Okay, now you're just going to scroll down a little bit further to where you see it says pass index. You're going to take this up to five. You're then going to click on shadow. Okay, and we'll scroll a little bit further down and you're going to select uh, receive transparent shadows and then where it says I'll pull this out a little bit so you can see it auto ray uh, bias right here you want to uncheck this okay and now with all that stuff done we've been in object mode the entire time inside of blender renderer so now with our face selected and that's you know we had the face selected because we wanted to set up the materials to go onto the face at least for this part. Now we're going to click here and we're going to go into edit mode. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press, uh, I have this selected, so I'm going to press A and this will be deselected. I'm going to press A again to select everything. And then I'm going to scroll back up and see right here where it says assign, select, deselect. I'm just going to select assign. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to click here, go back into object mode, and you can see we have our uh, face color on now and we're going to test out to see what we have here and it probably won't look that great when I first uh, click here because we have to set up uh, the light okay so for a second it, it shocked me but so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to hover our mouse here pull this over here you're going to hover your mouse over this almost looks like lines and that triangle here you're gonna left click pull and hold this to split your screen and this will allow us to see our render view here but be able to work easier over here so I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel back I'm gonna uh, hold the middle mouse button which lets me turn to the side I'm gonna select this light here I'm gonna push this light forward and now you can see that the face uh, come into view uh, I'm just gonna adjust this and as I adjust this light here because see in a render view you don't see the the light and things so it's easier to split the window just make this smaller it's easier to split the window and work here and look here and you, you can see what I'm doing I'm taking I'm holding the middle mouse button at turn and I'm just pushing the light out I'm just trying to get her face uh, more light towards the uh, the main part of her face okay and so you understand everything that's going on this right here again this is the render view I got into this view by pressing shift Z you can also click here and see this right here where it says you know solid texture rendered when I press shift Z it's a shortcut just to take us to where it says rendered here if I click here and I click solid it takes us back to this view right here so I can either click here to go into rendered and then you know click here to go back to solid or I can press shift Z and it takes me right into rendered and this is just you know your solid uh, view we are in the blender renderer okay Okay, now I'm just going to go to the navigation tab right here. Nice way of getting around Blender very quickly. I'm going to select right click. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel back. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. I just want to show you where the light's at. So the light, the light is about a head's distance in front of her. So I'm just going to hold the middle mouse button just to turn to the side. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. I'm just rolling the mouse wheel to zoom in. Okay, what we're going to do now is select the main head. We're then going to uh, let me pull this out a little bit. We're going to select right here. This is our material that we made up. So I'm going to double click here. I'm going to name this anime color. I just left click over here just to make it lock in just how I choose to do it. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to click right here to go in the front view. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan again to this eye. I'm going to select this eye. And then with this eye selected, I'm going to hover my mouse here, pull this over so you can see better here. This view that you see here is a, 
uh, global view. If we click here, this will take us back and forth between global and local. Local view is a view where you can work with an object and not be not have any other objects around it that can distract you. So we're going to click here. As soon as I click this, everything will disappear but the eye. So now we're in local view. Everything is still there in global view. It's just temporarily, so to say, hidden. I'm going to hover my mouse over this window because in Blender, where your mouse is at determines what happens as far as your shortcut keys. I'm going to hover my mouse over here, and then I'm going to press uh, Shift-Z to put this back into render mode so we can see what's going on as we you know, uh, uh, work on the materials for this eye. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click New on this Materials button right here. Um, and this, you know, just gives you a default gray material. Uh, with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to, we still have the eye selected, we're still in local mode. We're going to click here, we're going to go into edit mode. We're going to press A to deselect everything. I'm going to hover my mouse over here because this is a, uh, this is a separate object, this is a separate object, and this is a separate object. So there's three objects. So we hover our, our mouse over here, we can press L, and the, the entire object will be selected. So there it goes. Now I'll hover my mouse here, and this will also be selected when I press L. Okay, so now with that done, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click... Remember, this used to confuse me. You have the plus to the left and the plus to the right. You're doing the plus to the right. You're going to click here. And what you're going to do here is when this pops up, you're going to click here to see the anime color we made previously. So you're going to click on the anime color. So there it is, but it's not applied yet. Now one of the things you want to do is we don't want to change this anime uh, color. So what we're going to do is click this plus button. Now we have anime color dot zero zero one. So now this we can change the color and not have to worry about changing the color, you know, for for the rest of uh, or changing the other color which you can see on this face. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to make this just a little bit darker. Oh, maybe that's too dark. Let me push this up a little. Okay, and then. Uh, you won't see anything happen to the eye. Like, see it's here. Let me zoom up. I'm just rolling my mouse wheel so you can see the eyelid here. So now when we click Assign, now you can see there the, the color went in. Okay, so we have that general color there. Now we're going to color these uh, eyelashes. So I'm going to hover my mouse here. I can either hold the middle mouse button and drag this to the side, where I can roll the mouse wheel and it will make this scroll. And I'm scrolling just so I can get to the vertices, edges, and faces. This is proportional editing. I'd rather have this off, so I'm just going to click disable. You don't really need to know what that is for this tutorial. Anyway, I'm going to go to faces and select here. And then with that face select on, I'm going to zoom in here by rolling my mouse wheel. With my mouse hovered over this screen, I'm going to press shift space. Now when I hit shift space, this view will fill the screen. And we just do this, uh, you know, temporarily to make work easier. So I'm going to press shift space and now you can see this is filling the screen. Uh, so I'm just doing this just to make it a little bit easier to select. So I'm on face select. I'm just holding shift here, selecting all of this here, which is the eyelashes okay so uh, now I'm just gonna press shift space again take this right back so it's a nice uh, little shortcut there it's uh, pretty useful so anyway what we're gonna do is so now we have this color selected so what we want to do is we're gonna go to the right plus not the left plus the right one click here and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click here. We'll go to enemy color one, select that. And then we'll click uh, the plus here to make another version of that enemy color two. So this, the reason why we did that is so that we don't change the color that's already on here. So now we'll click here. 
just take this all the way down to make it a, uh, maybe not totally quite black and then we'll just select a sign and you can see right there that you know color just went in as soon as we uh, press the sign and of course like I usually say the more time you spend the you know better job you typically can do so what we're gonna do now is uh, we're going to press A to deselect everything we're gonna hover over this main part of the eye we're gonna press L which selects that entire thing we want to change this color to white so what we're gonna do is go to the right plus not the left one the right one here click here we're going to now go to we'll just keep going down the line anime color 2 and then we're gonna select plus to make this go to anime color dot zero zero three it should change there it goes now we can change this color without worrying about affecting the previous color uh, which was you know the eyelashes so we'll click here take this all the way up put this right in the center here and then we'll just uh, select the sign and now you can see that the white come in right there okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A to deselect sure we're on face select and we are I'm gonna press shift space to temporarily go to full screen I'm gonna select here then I'm gonna hold shift and select all of this here you can usually do this by holding alt and holding alt and clicking will typically make you select uh, an edge loop however sometimes it I don't know I don't know if it's blender or you clicking the wrong thing it doesn't probably you clicking the wrong thing or me clicking the wrong thing anyway so now that I have that done I'm gonna press uh, shift space to go right back and what we're gonna do the same thing again and you know we're just gonna keep uh, doing this until we have our colors in which shouldn't be too much longer so we're gonna uh, press the right plus not the left plus right here uh, we're gonna click here anime color 3 we're gonna press plus then we're gonna go to this color and we're gonna change this the color make this give her that blue color there um, and then we're just going to uh, press the sign just like before and you can see the color show up right there okay and this is where it's useful to actually have this render view on because I can see I missed that ring right there because this render view is clearly letting me see what's going on so I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel here I'm gonna press C for paint select Ugh, I want the inside I just want it here so I'm using paint select even though I'm kinda selecting I'm gonna right click to get out of paint select I'm gonna hold uh, holding the shift button to select these faces which is making them deselect and now uh, I'm just going to uh, make sure I'm clicked on anime color dot zero zero four click assign so now that spot is uh, filled in that had that original white ring there that was going around the eye now I'm going to press uh, A to deselect I'm going to press uh, C for paint select. I'm still on the face select. As in, you know, there's vertices, edges, and faces. I'm still on face select. I'm going to right click. I just press C for paint select and I paint it in there and I right click to get out of it. We can still, we can see when I hold the middle mouse button and turn to the side that I missed some edges. So holding a press C to activate paint select. And I'm painting again. I right click to get out of the paint select. Holding the middle mouse button, turn to the side. Holding shift in the middle mouse button to pan. Now I'm going to press C. And I'm just getting that all of the inside part of the eye. I'm going to right click to get out of the paint select. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Just taking a look. And look at that. I missed there. So I'm going to hold shift. And still holding shift to select there. Okay, now with that selected. It's interesting. When I selected that, it made it go to here I think anyway uh, um, what we want to do is we want to click the right plus uh, then we're gonna click here and we are going to uh, go to anime color 4 we're gonna press plus and uh, now we're gonna go here and we're just gonna go to black you know what you can actually could have just actually use that color but 
anyways and now you can see that right there okay what I'm going to do now is roll the mouse back and you can see there's this other eye now we've got to repeat the process over here I'm just joking <laughs> we're not going to repeat the process if you spend a decent amount of time like I did putting the materials on something and you're dealing with something like uh, an eye which is you know uh, this eye is pretty much uh, or actually is a copy of this eye then what we'll do is just roll the mouse wheel back in this view we'll click view global slash local to go back in the global mode we'll click here to go to object mode we'll select this eye we'll press X to bring up our delete menu uh, then we'll delete that eye totally now we'll select front right here you can see what viewpoint we're in front orthographic orthographic is kind of like a blueprint view it's easy to do things like what we're about to do in orthographic mode if you're in perspective mode like there just click right here and it'll take you into orthographic mode so what we're going to do is select this eye that has our materials on it we're going to press shift D I press shift D that's all I press and then left click right click or anything I tend to pull to the side when I uh, duplicate something just to make sure that it's duplicated now I'm going to right click to get it to jump back to its original position and now I know that I have that eye duplicated and I also have the eye uh, selected so you want to make sure that you have your cursor directly in the center to do this um, so you can if it's if your cursor like which is right here is your 3d cursor if I right click the 3d cursor will move around so if you right clicked uh, somewhere to move the 3d cursor you can get it back by pressing shift C and it'll jump right back to where it needs to be to do this so we're in front orthographic view with the, the 3d cursor being exactly in the center of this model uh, what we need to do now is I'm gonna click here nope I'm wrong my brain uh, this is the pivot point here blenders default pivot point is median uh, we want to click here there's a def default pivot point we want to change this to a 3d cursor so now everything will pivot off of this 3d cursor so we still have our duplicated eye selected so what we're going to do is we're going to press S to scale on the x-axis negative one and then left click the lock in and that just p put this eye perfectly on the other side and it you know brought along with it the materials that we just previously set up okay and I realize now that uh, she doesn't have any uh, eyebrows so let's fix that so I'm gonna click here to the pivot point I'm gonna turn this back to blender's default pivot point which is medium point I am going to select the face we're in object mode inside of the blender render I'm gonna click here go to edit mode uh, okay so I have a mirror still on this this is the modifier panel and I just clicked on this just so I could see if I had a mirror modifier on here I wasn't sure if I had applied or not and I can see that it's on there which will work out because that'll help us do this So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press uh, shift space to temporarily bring that view to uh, you know full view I'm going to press A to deselect here's my vertices edges and faces I'm going to select the edges here I'm just going to grab this part right here to make some eyebrows. So I'm going to press Shift D, uh, left click to you know lock it in. I'm going to push this forward. Actually, I'm not going to push it forward. Sorry. I'm going to press uh, E, left click to lock in, and just pull this straight up. Actually. And uh, what's nice about what I did there, if you need to make eyebrows on something like this, because I selected from right here these edge loops around the eye, you still have the eye eyebrow like going in the direction that it, it should be going in since it's coming off of this head. So it tends to work out pretty well. Anyway, I'm going to hover my mouse over this eyebrow. I'm going to press L, which selected the entire eye. I'm going to press E to extrude. Left click the lock in. I pressed E to create new geometry there. And with that new geometry, I can now push forward to give those eyebrows some thickness. So with that done, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button here. I'm going to uh, press L over the eyebrows to select the entire uh, eyebrow. I'm going to press Shift Space to come back, you know, back to our regular view here. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click here to go back to our materials panel. And then uh, what we're going to do is click plus here. We're going to click here and then we're going to select this anime color 5. And this time, since it's already the color we want, we're just going to uh, select assign. And since we're not changing the color, we don't, uh, you know, have to worry about, you know, the plus here. Um, okay, so now with the eyebrows done, we're going to click here, go back to object mode. Okay, now we're going to select the hair. And we're going to press new here. And uh, what we're going to do here is... Uh, we are going to click here. We're going to uh, grab the anime color 5. We're going to... I don't want her hair to stay that color. Uh, so I'm going to click here. The plus, you know, so I can change the color without, you know, this color being affected. Which if I didn't click that plus, you would see the, uh, the eyelashes change. So I'm going to click here. And actually, it's interesting. I wanted to give her red hair. Okay, and now with all of the materials in, what we're going to do is this little uh, triangular looking thing here. It kind of looks like stripes. I'm going to left click here. I'm holding down my left mouse button. I'm going to drag. See that arrow right there? That arrow is telling me that that left screen is going to replace place the screen on the right or get rid of it, which is what I want. And... Uh, what we're going to do now is we have an animated look to our character. We're just going to use a free sale to finish it off. So we're going to click here. We're going to scroll down here. And uh, you can see freestyle right here. So we're going to put a check mark right here. You'll see freestyle kick in. These lines are a little bit thick for me. So I'm going to click this arrow to open up the uh, freestyle settings. And I'm just going to click here, maybe take it down to 0.5. And there we go. I really like how this looks, and I am thankful to Marius Oberhoster, since it was from his YouTube channel that I saw a video tutorial where I learned how to set up these anime colors in the first place. So uh, I would recommend you go to Marius Oberhoster's uh, uh, YouTube channel if you want to find out more information about how this was set up. Okay guys, that's it for the tutorial. Um, for all of those of you out there who like the videos in this channel and reshare them, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos in this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.